Motion detection using PIR modules is very easy thanks to simple digital output and the ease of Arduino programming. In this video, we'll learn how to make an LED light up when a user walks past an Arduino. For this project, you'll need the following. An Arduino Uno, a PIR module, a 3mm white LED, a 680 ohm resistor, and a breadboard. When it comes to motion detection, you can do it a number of ways. One method would involve the use of ultrasonic modules that constantly make distance measurements. And if two distance measurements have a substantial difference, then an object must have moved. However, in this scenario, it would be appropriate to only detect the presence of humans and excluding inanimate objects. While this could be achieved with some object tracking software, it would be far simpler to use a PIR module. A PIR module, or passive infrared, is a module that houses a pyroelectric sensor to detect levels of heat in an area. Typically, a pyroelectric sensor measures the average temperature of the surrounding environment. But this measurement is not particularly useful when trying to track motion. If an area heats up during the day and cools down during the night, then some software is required to constantly take measurements and then account for these cycles. Instead, the PIR module splits pyroelectric sensors into two halves that each measure the environment and are connected in such a way that they cancel each other out. When a warm body passes the sensor, there is an imbalance between the two halves, causing the output to change. In our circuit, we take advantage of the Adafruit PIR motion sensor module, which not only handles the complex circuitry, but also provides two potentiometers so the module can output pulses at varying lengths and delays. In this project, these potentiometers are not needed, but they could be used to implement fail-safe features such as a silence command. The first step in our code is to configure the pin D2 as an output for the LED and D3 as an input for the PIR sensor. With these configured, we then set the variable flash number to 0, which is used to flash the LED n number of times, where n represents the number of detections. Then, in the main code loop, we wait until the output goes high, which indicate a detection. When the detection is made, the software increments the flash number counter and then flashes the LED that number of times. If the PIR module was being used in a more critical situation, such as guarding possessions, then an interrupt may be a better solution. Unlike pin scanning, interrupts execute a section of code as soon as a signal is detected and will interrupt any other code currently being executed so long as that code is also not an interrupt code. We can therefore adjust our code for this project to include interrupts. 